All right, guys, this is one of my favorite setups. It starts from the Americana. I'm working the Americana, and, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes it's just not going to have proper technique on it. He's going to be fighting, you know, if you're fighting a corpse, then yeah, it's going to work every time. But if you're fighting a live person who understands grappling, it's not going to work every time you get it. So you want to have your combination. Here's my combination here. I'm setting it up. I'm trying to work the Americana, and he reaches across my body in order to, to break my grip. I'm going to put my armpit as close to his face as I can, wrap around his head. As I'm wrapping around his head, I'm also twisting my hip to keep his arm pushed up against the side of his face. So I wrap around his head and twist my hip to keep his arm against the side of his face. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around. So once I get here, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to put my hand on his hip and turn this way. And then I'm going to lock my grip. Figure four arms, put my, my hand on his rib, and then set, sink my hips into the floor and squeeze and finish with the arm choke. The key into making this one work is you gotta be close to him here to wrap your arm around his head, put your arm hit inside of his face, and twist your hip to get his arm to stay across his face. Now, in full speed. Okay, here's a combination. I'm working from the mountain position. I start here on the Americana. Okay, now for him to get out, he's gonna to want to pull this in. He's gonna to try to pull his elbow into his body, you know, eliminate his 90 degree angle so that I can't I can't finish the submission on his arm. So while he's pulling in, I can't allow him to get it totally here. If I allow him to get his arm here, then I'm not gonna be able to pull his arm off and do anything with it. I'm gonna to have to bail out of the move, and I don't want to do that because I worked hard, one, to get to the mountain position and two, to get to a position where I can finish him. So now, I get here, as he's pulling his arm in, I'm gonna trap it with my shoulder so he can't pull it in to his body. So whether he brings this in past, nine, or closer to 90 degrees, that's okay for this move. But as long as he can't get his elbow into his body, I'm okay with that. So as soon as he pulls this in, I'm not gonna be able to finish the Americana, but I'm gonna trap his arm, I'm gonna stop his arm from going into his body. Now once it's here, I'm gonna take it past his head, this way, and put my chest down on the back of his elbow. So I get it here as he is pulling it in, then I bring it past his head. Now as I bring it past his head, I'm gonna step up and change my angle to here. Now, he can't get his arm back, and then I'm just gonna step over and finish with the arm bar from the top. Let's do it in full speed. Okay, now I'm working from uh, top side control. And I'm going for the, the Americana here. And you know, sometimes it's very difficult to get the Americana just because, you know, a lot of things have to be in order. One of them is the arm has to be at 90 degrees. And knowing this, um, my opponent will probably, he'll do one of two things. He'll either bend his arm under 90 degrees or straighten it past 90 degrees in order not to get submitted with the Americana. Now from this situation, we're gonna start where he straightens, starts to straighten his arm to, to take the pressure off. Once, he, you, once you feel him straightening the arm, that means go, that's your time. That's, that's when it's time to go. So once he starts straightening the arm, I'm, not, I'm gonna close in on that arm, I'm just gonna lean into that arm, close in on it with 
with my elbow and my shoulder. My bicep all this closes in on that arm. So I'm coming here, I'm gonna close in on that arm, then I'm gonna put my head down on his forearm, right where my hand and his forearm meet. Here, elbows are gonna come together and I'm gonna finish. Finish the lock. This also works from the Kimura. You know, if I'm trying to go for a Kimura, he's gonna start straightening his arm. Close in on that arm. Don't try to do it from here with all this space. Put your body on the arm, your shoulder, your bicep, everything is gonna go on that arm. So when I'm here, he starts to straighten. I'm gonna close in on that arm and finish. Let's do it in fast motion. Okay, this is the situation, position, the near Americana. Now what will happen here is, in order for him to get out, he's gonna wanna you know, close this angle on his arm to under 90 degrees, and, if, he, and if, if possible, pull his elbow into his body. And also what he may try to do, is he may try to take this arm and push off, you know, push my grip off. And that happens a lot right here, and he's trying to push my grip off the arm. So, Again, this is recognition. If you can recognize these things, you can defeat them. So start here. Going for the Kimura. Trying to finish. He changes the angle. It's going to be hard to get the more. Now he's pushing off on my elbow. Trying to get, trying to release, release my grip. From here, I step up. Put my knee right, put my shin right in his side. The arm could be, depending on where he's pushing off, it's going to depend on how I'm going to grip the arm. If he pushes off a little lower, I can grip the arm here. If he was a little higher, I can actually grip it here and step over. Just depending on how he's pushing off and where he pushes off is going to depend on where I grip. So let's say he's pushing off, he pushed off on my hands, I get the, the arm right underneath my elbow or right underneath my chest. I'm going to lean forward, I'm going to step over, I'm going to sit down, lock my knees and finish. Now I'm going to do it in full speed. All right, now guys, we're gonna work from a, a combination with this one is a Kimura from uh, Kimura to a guillotine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my hips out first, throw my Kimura up this way. Now he's gonna block, okay? Now once his hands, as long as I have control of his wrist and his arm is out in this direction, I can finish the, the Kimura, but once he blocks and brings his hand inside, it'll be very difficult. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post my hand, scoop my hips out, to go in the opposite direction. So right now, I'm faced this way. I want to actually be either square or face that way. So I'm going to come through, get my hips to the other side, and I'm going to wrap around his head. Once I wrap around his head, I want to make sure I cover the back of his neck. So I'm here, post out, switch and come here. This arm's going to come underneath his neck. I'm going to get my grip, and I'm going to fall to the side. Once I fall to the side, Elbow down and squeeze for the guillotine. Make sure when you're falling, make sure when you're finishing the guillotine, you always go to the side. Don't come and don't fall straight back and try to finish. Look it out. Get to the side. Point that elbow down, then pinch. Now, in fast motion. Okay, not all submissions work the first time you try them. And the reason why is because sometimes the person you're applying it to is just a tough son of, I'm not even going to say it, but that's what they are, they're just tough. So let's say I have a forearm lock on them here. 
and I'm trying it. I'm doing everything that I can in order to finish this. You know, I'm trying to twist my wrist, and he's just not tapping. I just can't get the pressure, the leverage that I need in order to make it work. So what I'm going to do is if I'm trying to get it, it's just not going to work. I'm going to try, pot. I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to come up on my toes, and I'm just going to walk around his body while I maintain this lock. And from here, I'm going to sit through. And what that does is it changes the nature of the position, and it puts all my body weight, because prior to that, when I'm just on one side, I'm just kind of using my arms and my squeeze. But when I come on this side of his body, it puts my body weight and my, my, my whole body weight down on the submission, all on his arm. Changes the nature of the position, and they have to tap from this position because it's just going to be too much pressure. Too much pain, too much pressure. So now, let's do it in fast motion. situation where I go for the Kimura and he uses one of the most common defenses and getting out of Kimura. He's going to block, he's going to step his leg up and he's going to block his arm from being extended past his body. So I come here, get the Kimura, he blocks. Now, yeah, I'm, now, I'm not going to get this out. It's going to be very difficult to get this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant my foot, I'm going to scoop my hips out because there's nothing really blocking my hips from coming out. So I'm going to scoop my hips out. As I scoop my hips out, I'm going to turn my legs so that my knee can come through. Because if I just try to get it through here, I hit the back of his arm. So I'm going to scoop my hips out, turn my leg, get my knee to come through. All the while, it's so important that you can't let him posture while you're doing this. So all the while, while I'm here, the weight of my arm is keeping him down now. But as I'm scooping my hips out and bringing his knee through, I'm going to have to come and grab his head to keep him from, from posturing up and looking up. So I'm just going to slide everything down to come to here to keep him from posturing. Once I get here, I'm going to bring my foot all the way through, lock on his back, raise the hips, pull the cross, and then finish the triangle. Now, what will happen a lot of times, let's say I get here and he doesn't step up the block, he just brings his arm inside. This can also happen where he just comes here, and again, I can't, it's going to be hard to pull this out. From here, I would just post off, go to the guillotine, finish the guillotine. Now let's get a different angle of these techniques. You guys can see now from here, got the Kimura, he steps up and blocks. Again, you know, I have, a, I have some space with my hips here. I can shoot them out. So I have this, the space with my hips. I'm going to plant the foot, get my hips out, bring that knee through, keep the weight on the back of his head, trap the body, come up, and finish the triangle. Now let's do this at full speed. From, from the Kimura position, I sit up, I reach for my Kimura. Now from here, again, you have to get your hips out and you have to have this arm at 90 degrees. Once he disrupts those, those, those details of the finish, you're going to have a hard time getting them back in place. So let's say I get here and he starts to straighten his arm. Once he starts to straighten his arm, for, he kind of has an advantage of, of escaping. So once he starts to straighten his arm, it's going to be hard for me to bring it back in. So once he goes to straighten his arm, I'm going to use that, his momentum. I'm going to start to straighten his arm for him. I'm going to lay back. I can lay back, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push on his arm. I'm going to push his arm that way. This arm comes behind his elbow, so I'm just going to kind of make an adjustment with my arm. I have it behind, underneath. I have it over his uh, bicep, tricep area right now. But as I straighten, I'm just going to slide it up a little bit to underneath his elbow. So right here... Right here, I'm trying to go for a Kimura, but as he straightens, I slide it up a little bit. Now I start to push his, his, his fist towards the ceiling, 
as I bring my elbow down. It's going to put a lot of pressure on his joint and hyperextend his elbow this way. Now the key here is you get a nice tight grip on his wrist because I don't want him to be turning his hand around. If he can turn his hand around and I'm pushing up, he may be able to change the angle. So I want to get a nice tight grip on his hand and his wrist here as I push up this way. Now fast, fast motion. Okay, now I'm in the, the, the Kimura position and I'm trying to lock it up and he does a really good job of blocking this time. He's blocking on his leg. Now he goes to escape. Now this is, we're taking it a step further. This guy has went out of his way to try to escape. So once he tries to escape, these are, this is the time, guys, where you have to start recognizing what, come ne what comes next. If you can't recognize what comes next, you're going to be a step behind of your opponent. So you want to be able to recognize that he's gone to his knees. So as soon as he comes through, he goes to his knees, as he gets here, I'm going to, before he can really set up, I'm going to slide this hand underneath his armpit. I'm going to switch arms, I'm going to put this hand underneath his armpit here, as I turn my body this way. Once I get this arm through, I'm going to put it as deep as I can under his neck. So as he rolled through, hold on, back up, back up. I slid this underneath. Then I'm gonna start pushing his head down. Then I'm gonna lock it up and finish the darts. But the key, guys, is recognition. As soon as he rolls through, or as soon as he rolls back to his knees, I'm here, he blocks and rolls to his knees. Don't waste no time, it's before he can set up. This arm should be in position. As he, as soon as he gets to his knees, this arm should be in position. Then push the head down and finish the darts. Also from here, when he rolls to his knees, you can also put the other arm through. So as you were, oh, wait a one second. As you were here going for the, the Kimura, he rolled over. I push this through. And I can lock that up and go for the anaconda as I roll through. But let's go ahead and uh, let's do the darts in fast motion so you guys can get a better understanding of how that works. Here's an option. Coming off of the Kimura, I start, sit up, I go for the Kimura. Now let's say, you know, in order for me to finish this Kimura, I'm going to need to get my hips out. Now let's say as soon as I go for this Kimura, he drives me back to the floor before I can get my hips out. So he drives me back to the floor, but I still have the Kimura locked up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to release this grip on his hand, on his wrist rather, and I'm going to bring it to his hand here and start to pull his hand up. Now, this may not be enough to do it. So once I get here, as soon as I release the grip of his wrist, I'm going to just take my hand and put it right on top of his fingers, right at his knuckles. So I'm here. I'm going to come here. Now, I need to isolate the arm to keep his arm nice and solid, nice and strong. So I'm going to take my other hand, I'm going to put it on the inside of his armpit. Now here, now he's not going to be able to move his arm. The arm on the inside of his armpit. I have control of his hand, and I'm just going to pull his, push his palm of his hand towards the direction of his elbow to finish. So the key is this switch of my hand here. I'm going to switch my hand to his knuckles, push on his knuckles, get my elbow inside his armpit, and finish. Now, at full speed.
right now, I'm going to start on another combination that works well. Very well, actually. I'm going to go for my omoplata. Hips out. Work for the omoplata here. Now, for him to get out, you know, it's, he, he probably doesn't want to get rolled over or anything like that. What's going to happen is, is you're going to wait for him to turn back into you. He's going to want to turn back into me and possibly posture up. I'm going to, I'm going to keep control of his posture just by keeping a lot of pressure on his shoulder with my leg. That will keep him from, from posturing up and escaping. But he's still going to want to turn back into me. So as he's turning back into me, I want to release that pressure just for a second. As I release one pressure, the other pressure has to come on. So I don't just release the pressure and wait and hang out. No. It's, I got the pressure for the omoplata here. This way, as he's coming back into me, I'm going to release that pressure and put the pressure of the other leg on his back. Now, once I get that pressure on his back, I'm just going to raise my hips up a little bit to get his arms to come across to the side and then lock up the triangle. And from another angle, let me show you how it looks. From here, I have the omoplata. Okay, now he starts to turn back into me, trying to posture up. As I release the pressure from one, because this is keeping him from coming all the way up, but he's still turning back into me. As I release the pressure from one, the other one comes down. Then I raise my hips a little and secure the triangle. Now full speed. Okay, here's the situation where I have the, the position on him and for the Kimura from the top and I'm trying to, you know, you know bring it back and, you know, he's just doing a really good job of defending, keeping his hand in front of his body. Now, when this happens, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide my arm all the way through here, both arms all the way through. I'm going to grab my bicep, tricep right here and my elbow on the other side. And then I'm just going to turn and squeeze. When I turn and squeeze, I'm also going to rotate this arm up so I get the blade of my forearm and the opposite side on his, on, his, on his bicep and his forearm. This way it creates a lot of pressure because if I'm on the flat part of my arm, it's not going to do nothing. I can do this all day. It's not until I turn and put my bones into his arm, his forearm, is what creates the pressure and creates all that pain which makes him tap out. So again, when I'm here, you know, I'm trying to work the Kimura, and he's just doing a really good job. He's, you know, he's a strong guy. I'm going to slide through, slide through all the way here, and get as tight as I can, and turn and rotate my arm to get those, uh, the blade of my forearm on his, on his forearm. Now, fast motion. Here's another situation that I have to work from when I'm trying to, trying to get the Kimura. It's, uh, it's all, all kinds of, of things that can happen when I have this position. He's going to be defending, and he's gonna, you know, so you got to have many different options that you can go to if you can't get the Kimura. So now I can't pull his, pull his hand away. He's doing a good job of defending. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step up. I'm going to step my leg up to his back. So from here, I'm just going to step up. I'm going to put my foot underneath his back and put my shin across his back here as high as I can really because I really want to keep it high so that I can be really tight as I apply the submission so I'm here I'm gonna step up to here and from here all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pivot I'm not gonna move out or anything I'm just gonna pivot and sit down if I move out I'm gonna be too far if I come and move out like this try to come over I'm gonna be too far and I'm gonna create too much space and he's gonna get out and I don't want him to get out so as I'm here, I'm going to step up, I'm going to pivot and sit down to here. Now once I'm here, my knees come together, I put his hand on my ear, 
and I go back. You can also do it this way. If you can't, if you can't get in here, just take your leg instead of putting it here on his body. Just step over his body. Keep your position the same because you want to keep your weight down on his head as you step over. So you just step over to here. Now spin and sit. Then put the, his wrist by your ear and fall back. Now let me do those, do that in fast motion. Okay, I have a situation where I have him in the in the kimura here, and in order for me to get the kimura, I'm have to bring it up and lock it all the way back. Now, sometimes it can be difficult, especially if he's a lot stronger than me, or he just he knows the game and understands what it takes for me in order to finish. So I'm starting here, and let's say I can't get his arm up. He's doing a good job of defending. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come around, bring my hand down, and I'm gonna grab his at his knuckles here. So I'm just I'm keeping the weight on his arm because I want to control it. Now I'm going to slide my hand out to his hand and grab his knuckles. And I'm going to turn it out away from him. So I'm here, I'm going to turn it away from him. Now once I have it away from him, that totally takes away his strength in his arm. He's strong here, but when I turn his knuckles away, turn his palm away from him, it, now he's not as strong anymore. So once I have that, I'm going to lift it up and put two hands on it. Elbows inside because I want to isolate his arm and keep it stable. I don't want to do this like this or however, however else, however any way that you can do it. So I'm here, I'm going to turn it up, then bring it to the center of my chest, lock it down with my elbows, then pull, put, try to touch his hand to his forearm and get the finish. Remember, isolate this arm so he can't move. He's not going to be very strong from here once you get his knuckles to turn here, once you get his hand to turn away from him. So let's do it fast speed. Okay, now we're going to give it another situation. Guys, you know, I, like I said, you always have to have an option for every situation. If you don't, then you're going to have problems in your grappling game. So you want to have options for every situation. This situation calls for when this guy, my opponent, I have him in the umaplata, and he rolls out of it. Okay, I have the, I have the umaplata on here. Now... You can sense when he's going to roll. If you got your hand on his head, you can feel him rolling. The one thing I want to do when I have this is I'm going to keep control of his wrist. And I want to have control of his wrist. So once he starts to roll, I have control of his wrist. I'm going to kick him in the back with my foot. As I kick him in the back with my foot, I'm going to plant my knee to the floor. So I'm going to sit up as I'm kicking him in the back. Then I'm going to plant my knee to the floor. Don't let go of this wrist. Plant my knee to the floor, putting my shin on the inside of his bicep. So I'm kicking him in the back, put my knee on the floor. Now, as I put my knee on the floor, I push his hand inside, and then I sit up. So I'm here, kicking him in the back as he rolled. Here, knee on the floor, push this in, and sit up. Now I'm going to put his hand on my stomach and come up and get the finish. Let's do this from a different angle. Umplata, he rolls. I'm holding the, the wrist, kicking him in the back. The knee goes to the floor as I sit up. My shin goes right in his bicep. I'm going to sit up and get the finish. Now, that was a, a little lazy sit up because when I sit up for real, I'm going to sit up, grab his head. You see, I, I don't even want to do it now because it's very painful. But that's how you have to sit up. Don't just, you know, don't just sit up and get the finish. Just really sit up and hug and pull them in. Okay, let's do it full speed.
Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a combination between an uma plata and an arm bar. Alright, I'm going to first start off. I'm going to start off with my uma plata here. Alright, if he's got his hands on your body, just always get his hands off your body. So now you can make you can work. So if he's got his hands up here, I'm just going to pull them off. Now, I'm going to start to push his head. So I scoop my hips out. Come over the top for the uma plata. Now, if I'm in this position, let's say he's making it difficult for me here, and you know he's fighting off my attack. What I'm, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure he can't hop over. So I'm just going to put a hand on his on his leg. I can I can hook it here. I don't really want to hook it here too much. I just want to put a hand on his leg. So if he starts starts to go over, then I can block him from jumping over. I'm also controlling his wrist here. You can see I'm controlling his wrist. So he can't get his arm, easily get his arm off. So I'm just controlling his leg with my hand and I'm controlling his wrist. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my body towards his legs as I get my knee on the inside. Here. As I get my knee on the inside, I'm also going to hook his shoulder with my foot. Turning the knee down, hooking his shoulder with my foot. So I start off in the normal umaplata position, controlling his legs so he can't hop over. Now I'm going to hip out, get my knee on the inside. Now I'm going to take my, my leg, my other leg, come right over the top and put it here. Now he can't hop over and I can arm lock here. From here and I have the arm lock. Note the foot on the shoulder, I'm hooking him down, controlling that arm, coming over the top and finish. Now in full speed. combination that you can work right off the Kimura. It's not a Kimura. It's an Omoplata. And we're going to work this situation off the Omoplata. Okay, here's what's going to happen. Push his head, hips out, go for the Omoplata. Now I'm going to sit up. Now let's just say for some odd reason, you know, he's real flexible and you're having a hard time getting that angle. And, or maybe you just want to hurry. Maybe you just don't like this guy, and you just want to hurry up and finish. So instead of going for the omoplata, I'm gonna take my hand, come around his head here, lean into him. I can pull up on his face here to to get to get the uh, the the face lock here. I can come around his neck, the neck lock here, or I can take my opposite arm, come around this way. Many different submissions that you can work just off this position if you don't feel like uh, finishing with the omoplata. Come around his head, work it, make it happen, get the submission on his head. Now let's do it in fast motion. <laughs> 